Hi everyone and welcome back to Inverter Always. I'm Dana and in today's video we will be wrapping up the nav controller series. I wanted to make one last video showing you how to set up the strip heater when installing FXTQ air handlers. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, you guys, so today we're going to be talking about field settings, specifically how to set up the strip heater on an FXTQ air handler, which is the air handler we tie in with the VRV equipment. Before we talk about the field settings, it's important to note a couple of things. There are a few different versions of the FXTQ air handlers. Today we will be focusing on the version that ends with TAVJU. If you have a version ending with PVJU or PAVJU, those are the older air handlers. It's okay if you have one of those. The strip heater is still something you can add, but the field settings and how we configure the field settings differs from the older generation to the newer. It's always important to note, regardless of which version you have, that you always refer to the installation instructions before changing any field settings. We've discussed this in past videos, but I'll remind you that once you change a field setting on a nav controller, that information is stored on the indoor unit board, which is non-volatile memory. There is no undo and there is no reset. So it's extremely important. You always go from the installation manual of the unit you're making changes to, to the nav controller. It's also important to note, you guys, that as we talk about these settings and we go through the different configuration options, which will vary based on your application, that a lot of what we talk about and how to set up the strip heat specifically is my opinion based on my market in the northwest part of North America and the number of installations we've had over the many years. There is no right or wrong way to set up the strip heat. It's strictly a, a preference setting based on the end user. So I highly encourage you guys to have conversations with the end user prior to configuring the strip heat. Each application is going to vary. And so it's really important that we dial in the field settings that will be unique to that user. All right, you guys, so as we get started, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is open up the installation manual of the FXTQ air handler you've just installed. I'd like you to turn to page 19 in the English version of the installation instructions. This is where your field settings for the strip heater begin. As we go along, I'll go ahead and, and I will snip it each section in the top corner. That way you guys can follow along as well. But the first setting we are going to look at is mode 21, setting number 5. Now, what I'd like you to do next is write down the model number of the FXTQ air handler you've just installed, along with the size of the strip heater. You see, it's very important that we double check and we match up the size of the strip heater in the chart here in the corner of the screen because certain sizes are compatible with certain size air handlers. For example, I can't install a 15 kilowatt strip heater with an FXTQ36 three ton air handler. The largest strip heater I can install is a 10 kilowatt strip heater. I use this specific example for a reason because there's very common times I'll get a phone call and the installer has installed a 15 kilowatt strip heater on a three ton air handler. It's just important to note certain sizes work and certain sizes don't. Now, the other thing we're gonna do after we have verified that the size installed is compatible with the air handler size installed is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna program our first field setting. Using the chart here in the corner, looking at mode 21 setting five, depending on the size of the strip heater installed, you will select a particular option. And just for this example, let's go ahead and use a 10 kilowatt strip heater with an FXTQ36 air handler, just to keep the example consistent. You will see that mode 21 setting five 
option six. You see that 06 right underneath the 10 kilowatt strip heater size. That's gonna be what you set for your field setting. So on the nav controller, it should look like mode 21 at the top, 5-06. Once the field settings have been selected for the size of the strip heater, the next thing we need to do is tell the strip heater when to turn on. So this is going to be mode 21 setting number three. There are four options. I'll go ahead and put them in the corner now for selecting when the strip heater comes on. And again, this is totally gonna be your preference based on how your heat pump is meant to operate. Option 01 is the default. And this means that the strip heater is not going to run with the heat pump and it's not going to run during defrost. There's two things we need to talk about here. And there's two things we need to program all built into one setting. Let's talk about defrost first. The defrost cycle itself on a VRVS system is typically so short, about six minutes, give or take, that by the time the user realizes that potentially cool air is coming from the registers because defrost is cooling mode, so that way we can defrost the outdoor heat exchanger, totally different topic for another day on how that works, but when the system is in defrost, cool air could potentially come out of the registers. But by the time the user feels the cool air, the heat pump has already completed defrost and is on its way to heating that air back up. So generally speaking, we don't really need the strip heater to come on for five minutes while the system's going through defrost just to turn back off. I try to not run my strip heat as often as possible. The whole point of a VRF system is energy efficiency. As soon as you run that strip heater, you're killing the energy savings. So I'm only gonna run my strip heater in the event of an emergency when I don't have a heat pump that works. So the heat pump breaks, I lose a compressor, that's when I'm gonna run my strip heat. Not because it's going through a six minute defrost. Fun fact, depending on how you configured your field settings, a couple videos ago when we were talking about the fan speed when your unit goes thermo off, there is a good chance that your air handler's fan is off during defrost, in which case you certainly don't need to turn on the strip heat. Anyways, your choice, option 01 and option 02, do not run the strip heat during defrost. Option 07 and 08, will run strip heat during defrost. So pick one of those two, that narrows your four, choice, four choices down to two. Now the other part of this setting is, do you want the strip heat to run with the heat pump? So that's supplemental heat. The heat pump is falling behind, maybe it's too small, maybe it wasn't designed for the outdoor conditions that you're currently experiencing, and your room temperature is starting to fall, below the set point. Supplemental heat, where the strip heat comes on with the heat pump, is meant to help the heat pump recover to the set point. And if you want this to occur, then you are going to select option 02. If you don't want to run the strip heat with the heat pump, because the heat pump was in fact designed and sized properly for the application it's installed in, leave it at 01. That way we're only going to run the strip heat in the event of a compressor failure or pressure transducer failure or another component at the outdoor unit that has locked out the outdoor unit. That's called emergency heat and we're going to talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Okay, so just as a quick recap, mode 21, setting 3, option 01, that's typically what I will select, but again, that's just my preference because I don't want that heater to turn on to help the heat pump catch up or during defrost because I don't want to kill my energy savings. I sized my heat pump properly. There should be zero reason for my heat pump to fall behind. I'm only going to run that strip heat in the event of an emergency. We call that emergency heat. So I'm going to leave it at mode 21, 3-01. If you want it to run with the heat pump, and you select 3-02 or 3-08. 0-8 would be run it with the heat pump to help it catch up and run it during defrost. Then there are a few more settings that you need to set. 
These are called your T on and your T off settings. Now T on and T off is actually pretty easy to understand. You're gonna to go to mode 21, setting number one. That's your T on setting. We'll talk about it in just a second. And then you have mode 21, setting number two. That's your T off setting. Now the numbers that you'll see here in the corner are the number of degrees the room temperature needs to drop below the set point before that strip heater will turn on to help the heat pump recover. Now, it doesn't matter what number you pick for your T on setting. This is totally preference. But it does matter what number you pick for your T off setting. The way that it works is whichever option you choose for setting one, setting number two has to be at least 3.6 degrees warmer than the T on setting. So for example purposes, if my set point 70 degrees, my thermal on off dead band is one or two degrees, and this was discussed in the same field settings video a couple videos back. I'll link that at the top here real quick. But if I'm set to 70 and my room temperature um, drops to 69 or 68, the unit naturally calls for heat, that's thermal on. And so it's very possible that my room could shift one to two degrees below the set point naturally. So that means that I typically do not want my strip heater to come on unless the room temperature drops a few more degrees. Again, this is preference, but I don't want my strip heater to run unless it needs to. So I'll typically select option four. So one dash is zero four. I want my room temperature to drop 4.5 degrees below the set point. That's a potential two degree drop to get the normal heating to start. So that really means 2.5 degrees more than the general thermo on off dead band. Now, by selecting mode 21, 1-04, with a 4.5 degree drop below the set point to turn on the strip heat, I have to run that strip heat for at least 3.6 degrees of recovery. So if you look directly below 4.5, you'll see that it says 0 0.9. That is the closest or the, the the soonest that I can turn off the strip heat. And generally, that's actually a really good um, number to choose because it doesn't quite get you to the set point. It turns off the strip heat before it gets to the set point. What I worry about is um, selecting mode 21, setting number two, too close to the set point, or you'll see you even have the ability to overshoot the set point. I don't want it to get too warm in the space. So I'll typically go 4.5 degrees to turn on the strip heat, and then I'll select option number four to shut off the strip heat one degree below my heat set point. Again, this is totally your preference. What you cannot do is select 1-04 to turn on the strip heater 4.5 degrees below the set point, but then mode 21 setting two is dash zero three. I can't go. I can't go backwards in my options. My off temperature can't be two dash zero three because four point five minus one point eight is not three point six. So you'll notice the way that the chart's written. If you just pick the same option for both your T on and your T off, that'll keep you safe and out of trouble. And that's generally a pretty easy way to go. Now we're not quite done. We still have one more field setting that we need to enable. Now this last field setting we will need to enable is actually at the outdoor unit. This is something that should get enabled anytime you have strip heat installed, regardless of how you programmed your strip heat to operate. All the settings that we just talked about, except for the size of the strip heater. That has to be set for the size of the strip heater. But mode 21, setting three, mode 21, setting one and two that we just talked about, none of that matters when the heat pump breaks. When the heat pump breaks, it locks out, goes into something called heat pump lockout, and your strip heater will now come on as the primary source of heat, and it will then heat to the normal thermo on off dead bands as the primary source of heat. That's our emergency heat function. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to set the field settings for heat pump lockout at the outdoor unit. So now that you're at the outdoor unit, take off the panel and you'll see that there's all those LEDs. 
you need to get into the service mode field settings of the outdoor unit. If you don't know how to do this, it's definitely a good time to stop figure out how to get in as the service technician. You have the resources to get in. We've talked about this in past videos. And if you don't, you definitely should be contacting your local manufacturer's rep. Once you know how to get into the service mode, what you're gonna do is go to mode two, setting 37. So carefully get to 37 without accidentally hitting that return button. So be careful if you have fat fingers, just go slow. Make sure that you get to 37 by counting the binary LEDs. And again, if you don't know how to do this, it's a good time to stop and call your rep so that they can help you get through this. Now, once you get to mode two, setting 37, you're gonna notice that upon entering 37, all of the LEDs except for number one are off, and that indicates option zero. You want option one. So you're gonna go ahead and change it to option one, Make sure when you save, you also hit return a second time to activate the setting. That's probably one of the biggest keys that gets missed is folks forget to activate the setting after they save it. Once you do this and you have enabled heat pump lockout, should there be any sort of outdoor unit failure, such as an outdoor fan motor fault or a compressor fault or a pressure fault, the system will lock out and it will automatically enable the strip heat to run as the primary source of heat. All right, you guys, that's about all there is to it when you're setting up the field settings for the FXTQ air handlers with a strip heater. Just remember that everything we talked about today is with an FXTQ air handler ending in TAVJU. That's the latest series. If you have a PVJU or if you have a PAVJU, those are the older ones. So don't use this video as a reference when you're setting up an older air handler because the, the settings are going to slightly differ. It's also really important to note, and we didn't go into a lot of detail about this, but when using T on, T off with uh, supplemental heat, it's important to note that there is a built-in S value that's going to change automatically. And you don't see this value, you can't change this value, but what it means is the system's going to internally monitor how many times or how often and for how long the strip heater turns on. And if the system sees the strip heater coming on very commonly, it's going to adjust this internal value to tell the strip heater to come on sooner. So if we had programmed option four for that strip heat to turn on at 4.5 degrees below the set point, it might actually come on automatically three and a half degrees below the set point. And that's so that it doesn't have to run as long to help the heat pump catch up to the set point. Now, of course, once the season would get a little bit more milder out and the heat pump could recover quicker on its own, this S value then goes back to zero, not affecting T on, T off. But again, it's a value that you don't see and it's a value that you can't change. So just to be aware of that when you're setting up T on and T off, again, my preference is to not use T on, T off and only use the strip heat for emergency heat purposes. But it's preference driven. So just make sure you have that conversation with the homeowner before setting any of these field settings and that way everything gets configured properly the first time. Well you guys, that's it for today. That concludes the nav controller series. If you enjoyed the series, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below. It really helps out the channel. If you have any questions or if you have any ideas for future videos, please make sure you leave them in the comments below. And of course, Make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell. That way you don't miss out on any future content. Thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you have an awesome day.